Yeah, I mean, I've had a couple run-ins, that's for sure. I've, I've had trouble with hippos. I've had an incident with a lion. I've had a few pretty close calls. But the one that, like, oh, yeah, I even start thinking about it now, I'm starting to get goosebumps. Wow. Every time it does this to me. I was in Australia, and we were interviewing um, some Aborigines in their village about this animal we were looking for, the thylacine. And in the middle of the interview, speaking to the old man about what they call the moon tiger, all of a sudden you just hear like screaming out across like the, the other side of the village. And, you know, me being me, I like jumped up, started sprinting over there and the cameras all fall. I'm like, what's going on? What's going on? And there's this guy with a big cinder block up over his head and he's about to smash this thing. And I look down and there's there's a coastal taipan. Now, if you look it up, the taipan is one of the deadliest snakes in the world. Um, I mean, absolutely crazy venomous deadly the kind of thing that you're just not coming back from if you get a bite to add insult to injury they're super aggressive like they're the only snake or one of the only snakes that will come at you they won't just run away or like to bite you out of defense they're actually come at you anyway i jump underneath the cinder block and i'm like stop 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 you know don't smash it let me catch it and get it out of here and the guy's like reluctantly like lowers the cinder block and he's like yeah okay no problem whatever and in the time that that's happening, this incredibly fast, like seven foot long taipan goes shooting under the stilted house. I'm like, shit, okay, I gotta get to this, this taipan. So I like get under the house, I got my flashlight, you know, it's like the house is raised like two and a half feet. You know, you, you guys know what it's like. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is, is your adrenaline pumping at this point or this is just another day at the office? Oh no, at this point, nothing. This is just, I gotta get the snake. Nah, this is nothing. This is just like, all right, you know, dog leg, get this done. Um, so yeah, so I start flashlighting under the house and I'm looking and I kind of see the taipan over here and I start belly crawling under the house and it's really dark and it's like a pretty big house. So it's, you know, like you can't really see what you're doing, but I still got eyes on the taipan. And then he like darts over to another corner and I start working my way up to that corner. He darts somewhere else and I lose him. And I'm like, shit, this is not good. You know, not only did I stop them from killing the taipan, but now he's under someone's house. Like if I don't get him out of here. Somebody or that snake is going to die. Like I've got to, I've got to sort this out. So I, I pull back out from under the house and the entrance to the house is like a, you know, three or four step entrance with split level stairs. And I, I run around by the front door and I'm like, I lost him somewhere in here, shining the flashlight, shining the flashlight, nothing. So eventually I'm like, all right, well, I'm just going to stick my head in here and see if I can see him. So I, I go to the stairs, the, the first stair, second stair, and I lie down on my belly on the first stair and I, I have my headlight on. And I stick my head into the hole looking for the taipan. And I start scanning around like this, keeping in mind, you know, it's like two feet tall. So like I'm really sandwiched in there, right? And I start looking around and one of my camera guys is like, can you see him? I'm like, nah, nothing yet. And just then I just feel this. This Coming taipan, the, side of your oh, neck. the taipan God. comes up to the side of my neck, right by my jugular, gives me a little lick flick with his tongue and slowly starts to crawl up around the back of my neck. Now, this is about a seven and a half foot long, incredibly deadly snake. And I just freeze. I just go completely dead motionless. Now, snakes pick up on heat. They pick up on thermal signatures. It knew I was there. And it just slowly slithered up across the back of my neck and off down the other end. And I just, I was about wow. to throw up. I was losing my shit. Now, I've been bitten by a ton of snakes. It doesn't bug me. But to have such an aggressive crazy venomous deadly snake crawling over the back of my neck and i couldn't move if i had freaked out or twitched or rolled it would have just yeah, gone babe. that would have been the end so i just had to sit there for like 25 seconds while this thing slithered over my neck before i pulled back out of the stairs and uh like i said i'm just getting goosebumps describing it because that was i mean that thing had bit me in the neck we were we were 13 hours from a hospital to begin with but you know i was done so no matter what and uh Anyway, long story short, eventually it slid off my neck. I now knew where it was. I was able to kind of come back around, got the snake out from underneath the house, moved it. Nobody died. Not me, not the snake, not a villager. So it was, uh, it was, I guess, worth it. But whew, gives me the heebie-jeebies just talking about that thing on my neck. And now you said if that thing would have bit you, th there's no chance of survival. No. If it bites you, you're done. done. I remember you saying, and this kind of gave me chills, you said if it bit you, you would have probably just got up, gave your camera crew a hug, yep. and, and then and then that would have been it. Just sat down and said goodbye. Nothing else you can do. Wow. No point in panicking. No point in rushing. No point in calling air service. Like you're done. You know, I would have got up, probably done a message to my family on camera, sat down, and waited for it to kick in.